Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Money Show right here on ET Now. I'm Avan Dabaj. This is a personal finance show which is dedicated to you, the viewer. We want to help you out, capitalize on your investments, make right decisions while investing. And for that, we have with us a very special guest today on the show. Joining in, we have Radhika Gupta, CEO, Edelweiss Asset Management. Radhika, thank you so much for joining in. So much to discuss. And of course, our phone lines are open. If you have any questions or queries regarding mutual funds, do give us a call. Well, Radhika, let's, you know, there's a lot to talk about today, but I want to start off with the basics. There's a lot to understand when investing in mutual funds, understanding the risk profile and avoiding making key mistakes. So let's start off with the basics. What are, according to you, if you had to count five points while investing in mutual funds, what would you tell investors to remember? So hi, Avan, and uh, good evening to all your viewers. I think it's a great question. Um, five things, you know, if you have to think about mutual funds. One, I would say know your investment objective. That's super important. And your investment objective, I would reiterate, is yours. It's not your friends. It's not your neighbors. It's not your families. So know what you're investing for. So that's point number one. Second, I would say know the time horizon for what that you're investing for. Because once you have clarity on that, your investment experience will be very, very clear. So whether it's one year, three years, five years, 10 years, be very, very clear about that. Point number three is know and understand your own risk taking appetite. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky one, but it's important to understand how much risk you can take. And I think that is really different depending on the individual. So know your risk appetite. That's point number three. Point number four in my view is understand the fund that you invest in. I'm sure we'll talk about this, but the mutual fund category today has such a wide range of funds and opportunities, and all of them have different risk and return profiles. So understand the fund that you're investing in. And then most importantly, which is number five is don't lose patience, start investing and stay invested. So I think, you know, if I would summarize it, know what you're doing, why you're doing, what fund you're investing in, and keep the faith in the process. Okay, I'm glad we started off with this question because, you know, over the course of the show, Radhika, I do want to talk a little bit about the market volatility, what this means for those who have put their money into mid and small caps because of the kind of uh, movement that we've seen so far. It's been very rattling for a lot of retail investors as well. But I'm just going to stick to one of the points that you brought up. Understand the fund that you invest in. You know, you did speak of funds having very different profiles, etc. What would be the key to understanding the fund and knowing what is most suitable? So I think, you know, the first thing that you can start off and, you know, if there's one thing I would say is the person who can help you best understand a fund is a financial advisor. So if you're a new investor, firstly talk to a financial advisor who can help you understand funds. Now, the good thing is today in the mutual fund industry, you have funds that do everything from serving a one day investment purpose to a five to 10 year investment purpose. So depending on your need, and all of those obviously have different risk profiles. Now, if you invest for one day, the fund is going to be very, very conservative in what it's doing. If you invest for five years, the fund may be a mid or small cap fund that is taking a lot more risk. So you have to understand what the portfolio of the fund is. Is the fund holding corporate bonds and deposits or is the fund holding high but small cap companies? And then that will determine the risk profile of a fund. And I think, as I said, a financial advisor can really guide you on what the risk profile of different funds are out there. Okay, fair enough. Lots more to discuss as well as to what would be the key points for first-time investors as well. Remember, you can email us your queries on the money show at etnow.tv. We talk about mutual funds, taxes, insurance, so if you have any questions, do reach out to us. Well, for now, let's take on board our first question for the day, which has been sent in to us by Neeraj Jain. He asks, while investing in mutual funds, should I avoid booking profits frequently? What are the disadvantages of doing so? Um, you know, people tend to really do this every time they do manage to eke out some money. The, the, you know, the rationale is let me make the most of it and ju juice it out, spend the money while I can. What, but I understand that when you're looking to invest in mutual funds, you know, this is a key point, Radhika, that we try to drive home is that it's for the long haul. So take us through the reasons as to what your views are on booking profits 
and why one should avoid doing that. So I think you summarized it perfectly. You know, there's a great quote that compounding is really the only free lunch in the market. It's, it's effectively the eighth wonder of the world. And by periodically putting money into mutual funds and taking it out, whether, through it's, a di whether it's a dividend payout or a partial redemption or a profit booking, you're losing, you're not giving your money that chance to compound, which is very, very important. So that 100 rupees that you invested this year becomes 110 next year. Your effective gain next year starts on 110. That's very, very powerful. So the following year, you're not going to get 120, you're going to get 121. And you'll be amazed at how much that builds up. As you said, investing is absolutely for the long term. Compounding is really a free lunch. So unless you need the money, avoid taking it out. And we often need less money than we think. You know, we often don't need that money. All right, that's the view coming in, you know, to really talking about the overall art of investing. But, um, uh, and as well as what exactly you would, uh, you know, the classic mistake that you would be making if at all you didn't, uh, you know, take advantage of the power of compounding. Okay, let's move on to the second query then. And um, Radhika, this one has been sent in to us by Pradeep Rao. He says, I have invested in many mid and small cap funds. With the markets underperforming, I'm very worried about losing my hard-earned money. What is your advice? And I really want you to, you know, spell it out to us. At a time when we're seeing severe underperformance by the mid and the small caps, a lot of experts as well are talking about how this trend is only going to uh, continue or it's only going to become more fierce, the kind of sell-off that we're seeing in the broader end of the market. Investors here are, of course, pe pressing the panic button. For those who have invested in mid and small cap funds, what exactly would be the best advice for them? Sure, and I think you bring up a very, very relevant question. You know, stepping back, I think if you look at this year, the year that we've seen, this has been one of the years where obviously the broader markets have hit all-time highs, but there is pain felt in the mid and small cap indices. In fact, this is probably a year of historical divergence between the large cap and mid cap indices. Now, on a fundamental basis, I think if you're holding, what, what is mid and small cap? These are good emerging companies in the small and mid cap space uh, in interesting sectors that will hopefully go on to become tomorrow's large caps. However, because they are younger companies, they are definitely volatile. Now, what investors should do is remember that when they're investing in the mid and small cap space, their time horizon really has to be five years. So worrying about six months of volatility is not something I would advise. I'd advise them to think of their mid and small cap allocation as a five-year allocation and not really look at it on a month-on-month -month basis. Um, if you do that, you know, the volatility will start to hit at you. So allocate that part of your portfolio to mid and small cap that you can afford to keep for five years. Don't worry about what it returned last year or what it returned this year. Mid and small cap is not a category that's going to give you steady year on year returns. In the long term, it's going to be a very, very rewarding investment journey. But that journey is not going to be linear. You're going to have good years. You're going to have bad years. The one other thing I would add in, you know, we spoke about existing investors, but for new investors, you know, mid and small cap is something that we believe is best invested through the SIP, the systematic investment plan or the systematic transfer plan route that helps you egg out some of the volatility that you see in the mid and small cap space. So for existing investors, as long as you're holding on to a good mid and small cap fund, stay invested. Remember, it's a five year investment and don't worry about it. And for new investors, consider thinking about it through the SIP route. That's the safest way to go when it comes to wealth creation as well as putting your money into mid and small caps. Do remember to stay invested for the long haul. Keep adding new investments in order to average the cost of your investment. But the best way, most steady way as Radhika has elaborated is the SIP route. Well, we have a live caller with us as well. And if you have questions on investing in mutual funds, the basic do's and don'ts, mistakes that are made, please do reach out to us on the number or simply email us on the money show at etnr.tv. Let's go right ahead and connect with Prashant. I believe he's joining us from Bengaluru. Hi there, Prashant. Thanks for being with us on the show. Tell us, what's your question? My question is very simple and uh, basic one. So when the market goes up, 
even the mutual fund will also rise i think so and at the same time when is the best time to invest in mutual fund you know that the market is volatile all the time for example today itself market has given a green again it went down right. so in such cases how okay so a fairly valid question given the link of the markets with the mutual fund industry i think prashant is just asking how does one know best when the right time is to enter when there's acute volatility does one stay away or is that the right time to start investing in mutual funds radhika if you would like to elaborate yeah so i think prashant's asking a great question um and there are really two answers to this but the meta point is it's very hard to time markets so trying to guess the right time almost impossible i think from a retail investor point of view there are two solutions that the mutual fund industry has come up with that can help you address this problem a little more effectively solution one is that if you're investing in equity funds as i said the sip route was made precisely for this reason because of sips you average out the problem of timing you're constantly investing so you're not worried about the time you need to enter that's one option the second option is that the mutual fund industry has also made categories of funds that actually take advantage of this volatility so when markets are good they'll invest higher amounts of your capital into equity and some into fixed income when markets are bad they'll invest less capital into equity and more into fixed income these are called balanced advantage funds so they take care of that timing problem for you what i would say is don't try to time the market yourself that's very very difficult to do nearly impossible for an investor either use the sip route to do it in an equity fund or put it in a category like balanced advantage funds where the fund is effectively doing the timing for you using some process difficult to time the market but a valid question then i hope prashant we were able to help you out do remember you can email us your questions on the mutual fund industry or any funds that you may have as well on the money show at etnow.tv radhika let's take on board another question from aditya sharma he says i'm a first time investor and i would like to understand the tax implications of investing in mutual funds is it necessary for me to disclose my investments in mutual funds so let's talk about the tax angle of this and what would be your advice radhika sure so as far as tax is concerned i think mutual funds have a very well documented tax regime um you know to walk through it there are broadly two categories of taxation equity mutual funds are taxed at long term and short term rates short term under 1 year is 15% taxation long term is 10% capital gains after 1 year uh, that is for the equity category of mutual funds and the hybrid category of mutual funds there are a certain category of funds in fixed income that are classified as debt for the purposes of taxation they also have long term and short term their long term is 3 years and there's taxation with indexation short term is prior to 3 years in is and is at the full rate um you do need to disclose your taxes when you file your mutual fund investments when you file them uh when you file your taxes towards the end of the year and of course your tax advisor or financial advisor can help you with the process but it's a fairly well understood and well documented tax process right uh, ve- a fairly well understood and a well documented tax process and i hope we were able to answer your question regarding the capital gains that are levied on mutual funds and how you need to disclose those taxes while you're filing your returns radhika stay with us we've got lots more to chat about we'll take a quick break be right back on the money show in the meantime you can get those phone lines working as well as email us on the money show at etnow.com Your dizzying lifestyle needs investment ideas at lightning speeds. Watch Market for Tuffert. Get 30 big stock ideas in just 30 minutes. Market for Tuffert. Quick, crisp, credible. Market for Tuffert. Only on ET Now. Rise with India. 
empire is growing. Are you? Have you secured your financial future? Does your money work as hard as you do? Presenting The Money Show. India's only daily show on money and personal economy where we answer all your financial and investment queries and resolve to help you rise with India. Weekdays at 5.30 p.m. Only on ET Now. the size of India, the fact that we have a sound. Thanks for staying on with us. This is The Money Show. Today we're in conversation with Radhika Gupta, CEO, Edelweiss Asset Management. We thought it would be interesting to get on board her perspective to understand as well what the outlook is on the mutual fund industry as a whole and how you can best invest and take advantage of the markets as well as the best way to play the market volatility. So, uh, Radhika, uh, you know, just wanted to also talk about another topic in terms of expert advice from you as to what a new investor should do when it comes to direct plans of mutual funds. Is it advisable for a new investor to invest directly in the direct plans of mutual funds or not? So, I think it's a very relevant question that you've asked and this question of direct has come up a lot. Now, for a newer investor, I think the role of financial advice is not something you can underestimate at all. In all domains of our life, whether it is taxation, whether it is medicine, whether it is law, whether it is your CA, you rely on an expert advice. And for new investors, I think that role of advice, that role of an advisor is very, very important. Um, direct plans may be suitable for very financially savvy investors who know exactly what they want and what fund they need. But for a majority of investors, advice is very, very important. I would also tell investors that, you know, you talk about this difference between direct and regular from a cost perspective. The cost difference compared to the value of financial advisor can add to your portfolio and the incremental returns as well as the comfort that you'll get from an advisor is very, very powerful. So I, wouldn't, I would say don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Um, recall also at the beginning of the show that when you asked me about five tips for investing in mutual fund, the first thing I said is know your objectives and everybody's objectives are very, very different. An advisor can also help you understand your objectives today, tomorrow, how they change through your life. So that role is very, very powerful. And as I said, don't let a little bit of cost get in the way of your broader financial health. All right. Pennywise, pound foolish, that would be a very silly mistake to make when it comes to direct plans of mutual funds. It's avoidable, especially for those who are not market savvy investors. Well, I believe we have another live caller. Subhashish Ghosh is joining in. He's with us on the phone line from Gurugram. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ghosh. I believe you've been having a little bit of trouble trying to connect with us. Thanks so much for calling in and finally we get to talk to you. So tell us, I think you have some comments or questions regarding the power of compounding um, remark that was made by Radhika. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I had already, I, I think probably for the first two weeks I've been uh, trying to connect and I've been watching this uh, program for a long time. From, and so okay. my query is regarding the power of compounding. Power of compounding works only when the you have the interest locked in like in an fd so if i get 10 rupees interest on 100 rupees that 110 rupees doesn't go down in the next quarter even if the interest regime goes down but in a mutual fund the nav goes up and down so how does the power of compounding work over a longer period of time wouldn't it be better to book profits and keep on reinvesting that money that is my first query okay. and my second query is that with a time horizon of 20 years and a allocation of 50% in mid caps and 50% in large cap and multi cap equity hmm. uh, is it a, a monthly allocation of close to 50000 rupees is it a good amount to have a substantial retirement corpus that's the only to carry rest i have emailed before 
Sean, we will take on both the rest of your queries. Radhika, let's let's talk about the, the first point. If you could just reiterate, because they say, you know, money is prolific, generating nature. It can, uh, you know, offspring and it can it generate more money. We're talking about the power of compounding, which is simple, but a very powerful one. Highlight how it works when it comes to mutual funds. And, uh, you know, if you could just take it on board, uh, Mr. Ghosh's question. Sure. Um, and I think, you know, there's, you can't talk about the power of compounding enough. So say you invest 100 rupees at an NAV of 10 and that NAV of 10 then becomes an NAV of 11 a year later because the fund has delivered a 10 rupee, a 10 percent return to you. Your 100 rupee investment then becomes a 110 rupee investment. Then what you're doing is you're investing that 110 rupees at an NAV of 11 that fund again grows 10 percent so now you are earning that 10 percent not on the original 100 rupees that you've invested but on the 110 rupees now mr ghosh of course brings up a point that the power of compounding only works when your returns are positive mutual fund navs no doubt are volatile but in the long term if you look at any you know mutual funds invest in equities and over the long term equities have been an asset class for wealth creation even if you look at a three to five year horizon, even a three year horizon, um, the probability of you losing money over a rolling three year basis in equities is actually very, very limited. So over a 20 year period, as he's talking about, the power of compounding will be very large because equities as an, as an asset class have created wealth. And that's the basic sort of premise that you have to go in with when you start your investing journey. All right, Mr. Ghosh, I hope we were able to get your question answered. One cannot reiterate and emphasize much, uh, much more on the power of compounding than we have. And of course, you can send us your detailed portfolio on the money show at etnow.tv. Now, let's move right on then. And Radhika, I want to talk to you about an initiative being undertaken by the Times Group in association with Amphi. We've recently launched it. It's called Jan Nivesh and Nivesh, an investor education initiative. We want to get investors to pledge at least one day of their income into mutual funds for the long-term benefit. Um, we're advising people to connect with us as well. Be part of the Jan Nivesh movement. You can just give us a missed call on 1-800-833-3366. I would just like to get in your thoughts. You know, we're talking about the power of compounding. We're talking about SIPs, how you can really make the most of the mutual fund industry. What do you make of the Jan Nivesh initiative? And what is your plea or what is your message to investors out there? So I, you know, I'm a proud member of the mutual fund industry as well as of the Amphi board. And I think just as mutual fund Sahi Hai was a very, very transformational initiative for mutual funds. It made mutual fund a household name. I think Jan Nivesh is a very powerful pledge that all of us have taken. Uh, today, mutual funds have a rich 20 year history. And I truly believe that for a retail investor, there is no better asset class. It gives you liquidity. It gives you long-term wealth creation. It's extremely well regulated by SEBI. And it talks about taking your money from physical assets or from deposits to financial assets where it will grow and where it is readily accessible to you. So I would encourage all viewers and all investors to take the Jan Nivesh pledge uh, to pledge that one day of income definitely towards mutual funds. And I hope that one day is a step towards a much larger investment in mutual funds because I truly believe mutual funds have to be the core of any investor's portfolio. There really is no better alternative today. That's the line that we'll end with. There is no better alternative. It's the core of your portfolio. Take the initiative and start now. And I'm just going to remind our viewers that we want to encourage you to make the most of the mutual fund industry. Be a part of the Jan Nivesh movement. Give us a missed call on 1-800-8333-666 to pledge to invest at least one day's income into mutual funds it's very simple we already have a lot of investors who have um, agreed to be a part of this uh, initiative and we encourage you to do the same
And on that note, Radhika, great having you with us on the show. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm sure you've really cleared the air and given a lot of uh, informative adv and educational advice to a lot of our investors. We look forward to having you more often. And for those of you who are watching, we want to reach out to you if you have any questions or queries on The Money Show. We promise to take on board your queries, not necessarily today, but through the course of next week. You can reach out to us via multiple ways, call in or simply email. Thanks for watching.